Oh, Matt Crew Photography. I kind of knew it might come to this. I mean, there's not much else to photograph in the home. So here we are, Matt Crew Photography. Truth is, it's not really my thing. And whenever I try to look for Matt Crew Photos for inspiration, all it brings up is photos of flowers and disgusting close-up pictures of insects. Technically an arachnid, you noob. Anyway, not that keen on getting close up with insects or arachnids. But that's not to say I don't like macro photography. I think it's quite cool, in fact. It's just that it requires quite a bit of time and quite a bit of patience to make it look good. Time is plentiful at the minute. It's just that my patience is never very generous at dishing out the time. Yes, yeah, so in that intro, you might have noticed a rather weird and wonderful lens. This is a Lauer lens, 28 millimeter probe lens. Check that out. Look at that. So-called probe lens because you can probe stuff with it. Now this is actually borrowed from Lara themselves. I asked them nicely if I could borrow one. This is a Canon mount, so naturally I have mounted this to my Sony. Expelliarmus. I am psyched to get into macro photography, mainly because I'll be shooting quite a bit of it for a while. And here are some handy top tips to get you into it if you're gonna join me too. But before that, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, the place to go to for creating your own slick looking website or online store. Shit, starting to overheat now. And macro photography is kind of technical. You have to know your stuff. You can't just go around taking random snapshots. You have to be a full blown geek about it. So just how do you start with macro photography? But before you start, you might need to get macro lens and a camera if you don't already have one. That's a good place to start, but you don't need one of those proby lenses. That's just me showing off. You can get something a bit more regular and non proby There's plenty to choose from, which is just as well because I don't think I'll be getting that lens back anyway. But what exactly are we looking for when we want to buy a macro lens? Oh, thank you. Hi, Mmm. There we are. Thank you. So with focal lengths and maximum apertures, I just assume you know exactly what you want in that. Just because I'm too lazy to explain it. But with macro lenses, what you need to know is magnification. See that number right there, two to one, that's the magnification. That is actually pretty good. One to one is already pretty decent. What does it all mean? Well, if you think of those model cars, whatever scale number, one to 25, 150, one to 100, vroom, vroom, there we go. We've got special sound effects as well. That shows you just how small it is compared to the real thing. If we start from one to two, if that's the most the lens will go to, it's barely a macro lens. An object of 36 millimeter width will be half that on your sensor. It equals 18 millimeters, which looks like this on the 24 millimeter width Super 35 frame. One to one magnification means the object will be exactly 36 millimeter in width, which would fit a full frame exactly, but wider than Super 35. Up to two to one and we're in serious macro land. It will end up as a 72 millimeter projection on your sensor, which looks like this. Another thing you might want to consider is working distance. That is how far away you need to be from your subject to get a certain magnification. A longer focal length would mean you can stay further away so you don't scare off those disgusting insects. Yeah, so I've just been shooting some footage for another video, but you know, when you get your first macro lens, probably the first thing you do is shoot wide open, as close as possible. That's when you start to encounter some problems. I mean, that's kind of understandable. When you buy your first fast aperture lens, what do you do? You shoot it wide open because you can. It's the same with macro lens. You'll shoot it as close and as wide open as possible because you can. But the thing is, when you shoot wide open, really close up, that depth of field is so thin. It doesn't sound like there's much wrong with that, but even if you're shooting something so seemingly flat, a lot of your image can end up soft because it's out of focus. So what do you do? Small aperture, right? I mean, the first thing you have to consider is do you really need to be that close up to your subject anyway? Does it really need to be that cropped into your image? God, his hair looks like the old bloody producer's hair. Okay, I mean, you could just move backwards a bit. I can see more stuff glowing red in the peaking. Stopping down will give you more doff. But even this close up, it doesn't really give you too much more. The background is still completely thrown out of focus. I mean, that's probably the misleading thing. When you look at all these fantastic macro shots, the background is always blurry, which leads you to think it's probably shot wide open. It probably wasn't. Try placing as much of what you want in focus more parallel to the lens too, if you don't want to risk not nailing the focus on the important bits. Now, the trouble with that though, is smaller aperture and less light. You need higher ISO or slow shutter speed. Depending on how close you want to get to your subject, the lens itself 
might be blocking the light from reaching a lens. That's why there are things like ring flashes and proby lenses with lights on the end of them. Whether you go for flash lighting or available light, make sure the lens isn't blocking it and make sure it's balanced and doesn't cast any unappealing shadows. Well, the easiest solution is to just shoot stuff outdoors because the light outside is going to be much brighter than inside your dank, dingy, dark room. That's for sure. Yes, it also helps to probably open the window. But some wanker was smoking just now, so that's why I closed it. Another thing you'll notice when you shoot at such a small aperture is that any kind of hair, that was a cat by the way, that wasn't hair on the sensor. Any hair or dust on the sensor, that's gonna look like extra detail on your photos. So do clean your sensor. Take your battery out. So your sensor is not charged and it's not gonna just attract that dust onto the sensor. Face camera down. Jobs are good and confused. Why does an aperture setting show up sminge and grime and dust on the sensor or the glass covering the sensor? Because with a smaller aperture, a smaller opening, the light is hitting the sensor and all that sminge at a narrower angle, so everything seems more pronounced. When the aperture is wider, the light comes at a greater variation of angles, so it's not quite so obvious. Also, at really small aperture's, the image will get softer due to diffraction, so you might not want to stop it down too far if you want to have incredibly sharp details in your macro images. Now, when you're shooting macro and you're shooting right close up, you're gonna notice through the viewfinder or the LCD screen that things are getting incredibly shaky, which is problematic. If you're shooting with a smaller aperture and you need a slightly slower shutter speed, Okay, so what do you do to fix that then? Well, you get your three-legged friendo. Or in my case, it's a three-legged friend made to be a one-legged friend. Why have I done that? Because I still want to have the perks of shooting handheld, but I've turned it into a monopod essentially, so I can still keep it mobile like this. All right, that's your one leg. Essentially like a monopod, so I can still move it around like this. Not that I'm really going too far because it's on my freaking balcony. But if your subject isn't moving anywhere fast, you might as well just free leg it. I just quite like being able to check out different angles. If you've decided on positioning, set up the tripod so you can experiment with what looks good in a macro shot. Take a shot, zoom into the details. Sometimes you'll be pleasantly surprised with the details you get. It's all about textures, the details, the shapes. It's pretty cool experimenting, trying to get creative with those little details that your eyes can't see, but you can with the help of a macro lens. And the great thing is that there are numerous possibilities around your house, things that could look cool when you get up close and macrofied. That ability to get close gives you the potential to see everyday mundane objects in a new light. And that is my newfound joy in a somewhat crazy time we're living in. Anyway, before the video ends, Here's a quick 20 second sponsored message. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you want to set up your own domain, online retail space or website, it's super simple to get started and make your next move with Squarespace. With an easy to use interface filled with loads of templates and backed up with 24 seven customer service. You can try it out with a 14 day free trial and get 10% off your first order with this link and discount code. I'd say, although I haven't really done too much, I've just been playing on my balcony with some water and a dried up plant, I'm starting to really enjoy macro photography. I don't know about you, but I'm getting some serious cravings to take photos of stuff, any stuff. It doesn't matter what genre of photography. And doing something that little bit different like macro photography, something that's a bit out of my comfort zone, is enough to give that tiny spark of inspiration to keep me taking photos. Anyway, have you got any cool photos that you've taken at home? Please do share them. Tag me on Insta with hashtag Kai. Expose yourself. Expose yourself! Happy to see them, happy to share them, just to keep everybody inspired and taking photos. Thanks for watching. See you again. Bye-bye.